Hello everyone, CrappyUp here, and we're back with another video about the Pentium 3 machine. It's been a while since I've actually made a video, but I'm hoping that we can upgrade this thing and put some theories I have to the test. Right now it's got a Pentium 3 at 550 MHz, 512 MB of RAM, a Sound Blaster Autogy SE, and an Ethernet card. There's no graphics, it just has the integrated Intel chipset, and I'm going to be trying and upgrading this with a graphics card to try and get better gaming performance. I'm also going to be replacing the Sound Blaster Auto GSE because it's not have drivers for Windows 98. And that's what led me to this whole like experiment I'm going to be doing here. So while I'm cleaning up the PC because it's quite dirty and old, I'm going to explain what this what I mean by this experiment. So usually when you see like retro computer videos and everything and they're like building something they have like the Voodoo 2s or like the best of the best graphics cards and stuff like that. And I wanted to see if just having like an office PC, you slap a budget oriented graphics card from back in the day in, would work just fine for Windows 98 gaming and just having a retro experience from hardware back in the day. So I'm going to be using a Radeon 7000 or regret into the Radeon VE. Uh, you know, it was VE then 7000 in this computer to see if this budget oriented card from like 2000 that cost only like $150 would work well enough to give like Unreal Tournament, Quake 2 and all these other like 90s FPS games I want to play on this kind of machine if, if they'll be playable on that kind of hardware. And so that's my experiment is seeing if the budget parts from back then are still applicable today for using it. <coughs> uh, so, one thing to be sure is, <laughs> while cleaning this up, I did manage to break apart the Odyssey, uh, Odyssey S, is, fuck, I can't speak English, but, really, when you're messing with parts like this, it's always good to be careful, because you can ruin things. The Odyssey itself still works, it was just a plastic cable over the CD audio thing, but, it's just something to be in mind, keep in mind, fuck. Now course since this PC is getting to be like really old I decided to give it a little cleanup give that beige the newish like less brown look it deserves like look at this that's far better ignore the CD drive I just need that to use a rewritable disc in there because I don't have any CD ROMs laying around to burn and I lost my Windows 98 CD <laughs> so I have to burn a new one I only have RWs so I'm using that for now so now that it's all clean and put back together, it's time to test if this thing even turned on. And at first, I'm not going to lie, it didn't. So I had to like go and pull it apart, do all sorts of shit with the cables while it's still plugged in because I'm a fucking madman. And it was getting power. And shorting the pins did turn it on. But what I figured out is that I had put the uh, pins for the power button on wrong. And so that's why it wouldn't turn on. So once I put on the pins for the power button, it worked just fine. See, like that. We got our specs right there, and we're going to be booting into Windows 2000, which is what I have currently installed on this PC. Because, well, I don't know what I was doing with it last, but it required Windows NT and XP kind of doo-doo look-wise. So... With it booting and everything, we decided to go ahead and take a look at the Windows 2000 install currently on there. And we figured out that it's, uh, the, the, the video drivers for this monitor, well, this integrated graphics card, do not work well with this monitor at all. At least in Windows NT in 2000, because... The taskbar was cut off, like different sides of the screen were cut off, and it was like graphics didn't work. And here I am burning a DVD and a well, CD, and it didn't work. It had files on it, apparently, and so I put it in the computer. Well, I tried to at first. This rewritable drive does not like opening at all, actually. Even though. I replaced the rubber band in it, it still did this. I don't know why. So every time you wanted to open this DVD drive, you have to take a paper clip to it. 
and fucking miss 60 billion times because you're stupid like me. But once you get it open, it'll close properly, but it will never open again properly. You have to like use the paper clip to open it. So luckily I replaced this drive a little bit later in the video. And with that, we, we turn on the monitor, get the Windows 2000, and we figure out something quite interesting. And that is the CD is blank. Like, I'm not going to wait for Windows 2000 boot to say that. It, it was just blank. It, it wouldn't work. I tried, like, ejecting and putting it back in. I should have trusted Windows when it said the disk image failed to burn, but I didn't want to waste, like, another 30 minutes of my time. So, being the stupid person I am, I shut down Windows 2000 and booted into the floppy drive on the thing, and, well... There's still no files on the, on the CD. Big, big surprise, right? So I had to go ahead and try and burn uh, another CD, except the original CD I was using just stopped working for some reason. So I had to go and grab another CD, completely blank and unused, and burn onto that one, because for some reason, when it failed to burn onto that CD, the CD was just gone forever. It just didn't work again. So I waited fucking forever to write another CD. I verified this one works, and it was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we need the paper loop again. But after that, we're able to get into the Windows 98 setup, format the drive. It's a two gigabyte drive, and it took fucking forever, man. Like, I don't know, like a matter of hours? Also, there's a dog right here. And here we go. After that, we got our Microsoft scan disk. Got to scan everything. And after that, we are well on our way. So this footage is sped up considerably because Windows 98 just takes fucking forever to install. Like, really, really long time to install. So we were just doing that. And after we got Windows 98 installed, well, shit, I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Well, I should just talk about Windows 98 more. I set up a custom installation to get rid of like all the internet stuff I wasn't going to use, like Outlook Express, who the hell is going to use that? Web TV for Windows, who's going to use that, you know? Uh, I almost accidentally overrode my Windows 98 setup disk because I wasn't paying attention to what was on the screen. And I actually didn't override it, thank God. But afterwards, dog was, came back and we had Windows 98 installed properly. Except not yet because we had to look for plug and play hardware. But after all that plug and play hardware and the drums, we were back at Windows 98. And here we go. <laughs> the moment of truth. First boot. <laughs> and here we go. A known device. Yeah. Windows 98 has a lot of that. So now that Windows 98 is installed and it's going through all its shit it has to do before you can actually get onto the desktop for the first time, I had to actually start like thinking about what I was going to install on this to test the difference between like a graphics card and anything. And I'm not going to lie, at first, I was thinking about just using <clears throat> like something like Doom, but then I realized that Doom doesn't really use much of a 3D accelerator at all, so it wouldn't have any difference. So I had to choose Quake. Well, I chose Quake 2, Unreal Gold, and Unreal Tournament because Unreal better than Quake. I also had 3D Mark 2000. Uh, one thing I forgot well, I completely didn't know, actually, is that Windows 98 does not like USB drives at all. Like, you, you without a, a driver for them, it just doesn't work. And so, in order to get past this, what I had to do is put the CD back into my main PC, burn some drivers onto it. Uh, I got the drivers from Phil's computer lab. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> And after we were able to burn the drivers to the disk, we were able to 
used a USB drive. Just kidding. It was uh, it was formatted as NTFS, so I had to reformat it. <laughs> Look at this. It takes fucking forever. And here we go. We got Windows 98 re rebooted with USB drive support. And it didn't have anything showing up because it was an NTFS volume. Me and my infinite wisdom. Oh wait, hold up. This might be formatted FAT32, I don't know. Also, what I should note is... Yes, you! What do you even want? You want in the sheets? You, you, you were doing this all so you could... Fuck you. Yeah, that little shit was whining and barking at me for a few minutes. But... Apparently that one wasn't the one that was formatted NTFS and I was able to get in just fine. And here it is installing our creative audio drivers. We have the creative and Sonic in here, which is actually made by a company that's not creative. I think creative bought them and then renamed it to the creative unsonic. It, it was weird. So we had our sound drivers installed, our ethernet drivers installed, so just in case I want to play like LAN or something, I can. Hey, that rhymes. So after we went ahead and installed all our LAN drivers and stuff, we just had to restart our computer. And there we go. We were all set with some drivers for sound and LAN, and I completely hadn't installed video drivers yet. I, it, it slipped my mind for some goddamn reason. And I actually never really noticed it because it's Windows 98. It's going to look the same with like 16 colors, 256 colors. It, it, it ain't got much in the name of color. <laughs> Yeah, so sound works. Now we've got it all set up back to its normal position. We got our dog over here playing with his ball. He does that a lot. He's, he's cute. I let him. Just not in my room. Alright, so basically, now we've replaced the CD drive with an actual working one that opens. And we're gonna install Doom. And this is where I hit the first hitch with no video drivers installed because well doom requires 256 colors for the installer for some reason i don't know why so at first i thought the cd rom drive i just installed was kind of broken because it took forever for it to seek it was like really loud my dog was like what the fuck and then my Doom CD didn't show up as a data CD. It showed up as like a CD with only one track of audio. So I took out the CD, put it back in, and that worked. So I guess it was just some like weird thing. And here it is. You need a color depth of at least 256 colors and a resolution of 300 by 200 to install Doom. And for some goddamn reason, I didn't believe it when it said that at first, so I tried it again to get the exact same error message. I, I don't know. I, I'm just stupid sometimes. Oh yeah, he, he came back even though I threw his ball out. He, he, he brought it back in. Fucking asshole. Trying to do stuff and he just annoys the shit out of you. I love him though. Alright, so anyways. Uh, that was off topic, I'm sorry. We decided to just check and see if the default drivers would work, but we only had 16 colors. So I had to go and find video drivers for this. And finding the drivers for Windows 98 was hell. Like, you couldn't find them. Intel still has drivers for it on its site, but they're for Windows XP in 2000. To find the Windows 98 drivers, I had to like go to like some really old article on I think it was CNET for some reason and oh yeah I had to restart there's no one in there see no one's in there weirdo 
that asshole was bothering me again. So I had to oblige him while the computer restarted because inserting a floppy just requires a restart of USB drive. And the file from CNET was copy 21 of... It, it was not very like professional or like really, I should say, affirmative. It, it seemed kind of fishy, but it was the only file I could find for video drivers. And you know, I could just reinstall Windows 98 anyways if it was a virus. But it seemed to be like an actual Dell thing. Hmm. I'm tired, sorry. And you click install now, and it will do its thing. Because, I don't know. I don't know why the installer used a fucking Internet Explorer web page. So now I had gotten the video drivers installed. I realize I've been saying we a lot for some fucking reason. Just roll with it, okay? So we got fucking hell. So I got the video drivers installed, and this greeted me. Yeah. A horrible high-pitched squealing noise from the monitor and this. For some reason, it decided to try and put this monitor in 1024 by 768 by default, even though I installed the correct monitor drivers for it that said it could only support 640 by 480. It, it was fucking stupid. I, I spent like 15 minutes troubleshooting this thing, trying to figure out how to click into the resolution thing because there's four mouse cursors on the screen and not all mouse cursors are equal. And I, f I eventually got the resolution down to 640 by 480. Managed to get the refresh rate down to just 60 hertz because anything above 60 hertz kills this monitor. The old IBM color monitors were not made for anything past 60 hertz. So after I went through all that trouble, I got the video drivers working again and I could load up Windows 98 and install Doom. Oh, this dog everywhere in this video. That dog is annoying. And here we are. We can now install Doom. Which was a relatively quick install considering Doom's a pretty small game. And there we go. Now that everything had been tested out, well not tested out but installed, it was time to like test out and see how well the computer performed in software rendering and of course how the sound performed because up until now I haven't used this Creative and Sonic at all. So it was basically a bit of a gamble to see what was going to happen. And for this video I actually directly captured sound from the sound card so that you can hear how an Ensonic would sound. And it actually is pretty decent for like most things. FM synth, it's terrible, but just listen to this. before I had any sound fonts installed for the sound cards so it was just using the Microsoft basic wavetable and it still sounded pretty good so honestly for like a cheap budget card it's actually not that bad and from what I've read it has great DOS compatibility except for like FM synth so honestly in this regard uh budget parts like sound card actually worked pretty well so you can get a pretty good 90s gaming experience out of that and next up was installing all the other programs now that I knew everything works. So 
Install 3D Mark 2000, Quake 2, Unreal Tournament, fucking Unreal. This game took forever to install. You're looking at 800 speed. Like 800 times, well, not 800 times speed, but 8 times speed, I should say. And, yeah. It took over an hour to install. So I'm just going to skip the rest of the installation stuff and just go straight to the benchmarks with integrated graphics. So this is just using the integrated graphics on the, the computer. And you can see that it's running everything. Like, I'm actually surprised because this is hardware accelerated 3D on the integrated graphics chip, which is just mind boggling to me, I guess, for the time. And actually did pretty respectable. Like, it was still running like this scene right here at like 30 FPS, which is actually pretty neat. And we got a score of 2,323 3D marks. And now it's up, up to games with some more direct captured sound from the sound card. So that way you can just hear more about it. But you're going to see that 3D games like Unreal, Unreal Tournament, and Quake 2 don't look or run too well. You'll see what I mean. Thirty FPS. That was terrible. Quick two next, and it has a weird issue where it gives me like an orange screen. But if you leave it for like five ten minutes, it'll eventually get to the main menu. I think this is more my copy. I uh, was using Steam and like the demo binaries, so it was messed up.
Quake probably ran the best out of all of them, probably because it was software. OpenGL isn't on the integrated graphics, but DirectX is. It's weird. But next up, Unreal. Overall, we got like 25, 30 FPS in general. Uh, that was with the integrated graphics. So it was time to install the new graphics card. Uh, you go ahead and slap that right into the PCI slot. That's right, PCI. This does not have AGP. That's an important thing. We're focusing on like budget office PCs from the era. So PCI, no AGP in this computer. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. It posts. We got video and everything. We got perfect video card to test, the Radeon 7000 slash VE. And to be honest, installing the drivers was actually not bad at all. I just selected the folder, it figured it out, and I clicked next. And I just had to wait. It even installed like the weird graphics control panel and everything. So kudos to Windows 98 for actually just fucking working for some reason. So after we got all that done, it was time to restart into our new graphics card experience and time to benchmark and see just how much of a difference a budget graphics card can make in the terms of, well, just like a PC like this. Would it be worth it for you to buy a office PC like this and slap a PCI graphics card that's budget like a Radeon 7000 into it? So right off the bat, we can instantly go to 32-bit color. So this is double the color depth of the original um, IGP because 
the integrated graphics could only support 16-bit color. So right now, the card is doing double the frame rate with double the color depth. If you change the color depth back down to, uh, say, 16, it would probably do better. Though 3D Mark only had 300 more points for some goddamn reason. I don't know. But we can just see how much of a better experience it gives us in games like Unreal Tournament. So we just we switched it from software to hardware rendering because now it supports it. And we gotta turn those graphics back up. All that kind of jazz. And we're at 32 bit color. Direct 3D hardware accelerated. So double color depth. Hardware accelerated, and we'll see how much of a difference it makes right after I fix the fucking resolution on full screen. Yeah, also, for some reason, in software mode, I could not get it, the game to go full screen, so with this graphics card, we are now able to go full screen. So with all that out of the way, it was time to test and see how big of a difference this 3D accelerator made right after it pre-caches. Quake 2 still gave us the same fucking orange screen. However, we can now switch to OpenGL as our renderer, and we can just see a transformative experience as the lighting goes from just white to color. We get better particle effects and everything. And as we can see from Unreal Tournament already, it was an amazing difference, like from 20 FPS to 60. So we're going to see Quake 2 and just how much of a difference even a basic 3D accelerator like this makes in an office PC, basically. All pods launched. Established communications. So, so far, this 3D accelerator has actually been amazing. Like, it only increased our 3D mark score by 300 for some reason. But, if you take a look, we've been running at like 60 FPS in all these games from 20 to 30, and we've been able to use hardware rendering with things like colored lighting.
So yeah, as you can see, this 3D accelerator has actually made a lot of games much more playable on this basically office PC from like the early 90s. Early 90s? Fuck, no, late 90s, early 2000s. So in conclusion, I say, yeah, getting some like budget parts from the day can definitely give you a great 90s gaming experience, considering that, well, this is what most people had back in the day. It's going to be much more easy to find than, say, a Voodoo 2. It's going to be much less expensive because it's more common. And it works just fine. We're able to play Unreal, Doom. Well, we were probably able to play Doom before, but Unreal, Quake, and the tournament. And I'm sure I'm going to be able to play Half-Life on this thing. No problems. It was a transformative experience. Double the color depth, over triple the FPS in some cases. Uh, despite the 3D Mark score barely going up at all, there is a huge difference in games. So, I say go for it if you're planning on getting like something like a Radeon 7000 to put with your Windows 98 Office PC. Now, I'm sure if this computer had AGP, it would have been different because you could get something much better for your money with AGP. But if you've got like some Office PC or you're looking to get some Office PC for real cheap in the day and it only has PCI, you can still get a great experience out of it. And you know what? I'm gonna say I actually liked this whole like project. It was fun seeing just how much of a difference it made. And I hope you guys had fun watching this. If you guys want to see any other like differences between games, like you want me to like follow up with Half Life or something, just let me know. I can do that. Well, thanks for watching. This was Copy Hop. Hope you liked it.